Welcome, welcome in everybody. Good to see you all. Sorry for the delayed start. We are here for the last race of this week. Division 4 at Singapore. Welcome in everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I am joined with a new commentator today, Mr. Mateo. Welcome in Mateo. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you, Jodie. Excited. Uh, life got in the way, unfortunately, so I couldn't go for the, at the start, but excited to be here nonetheless. That's what we love to hear. Again, apologies to everybody in the chat for the delayed start, but we are here now. And, um, well, straight to it. We're in uh, Q2. We've missed Q1. I'm not sure which drivers went out, but we will go on board with... I'm probably going to get the name wrong here. Maradmore? Maradmore? Maradmore. Uh, I've not commentated over this division, so Mr. I... Mr. Mr. Adam Moore. Mr. Adam Moore. That makes much more sense. Thank you very much, Mateo. <laughs> You're Thank God welcome. you are here. All right, we're riding on board of him. The first car to set a lap in this Q2 then. 14 drivers left. Does that mean there was a driver that DNF'd in Q1? Because I'm pretty um, sure we started with 20, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly. Possibly, we don't know. I've got Emotive Carrot as well on a lap. Uh, TYG Rogue as well just started the lap as well, as has the Hass of Daniel P45. So getting laps in early, aren't they, JD? They are, they are. Oh, oh, good. We can hear an echo. Fantastic. We don't want to hear that. Obviously, we don't know what happened in Q1. It's very close to vision. We've got a quick highlight video that we'll be able to see in between Collie and the race of what happened last week at China in Division 4. Um, but whilst we are here, I mean, I can't see what's on the screen. Whilst we're here, we will bring up the standings for you. As you can see, a quick little reminder. I need to bring it up on my screen as well because I can't see anything. I'm super prepared, as you can all tell. Uh, da -dun, da -dun. Right, so obviously we've got old Manzi leading the championship at the moment, 106 points with um, Immortal behind him. The Red Bull and the McLaren. So they're both the Red Bull and the McLaren fighting for the constructors as well. Things you love to see. We'll bring that small. We'll go back to full screen. We're coming around now. The last few terms for Mr. Adam Moore. What time can he set? Well, we're going to see very quick through those last few corners. 131.16. It's a very respectable time. To, it's a very respectable time to get this going. And we've got a motive carrier with 1328 behind him. Very, very, very big gap there between the Ferrari and the Mercedes. Um, we've got a yellow flag in sector 23, only boot brief, so probably someone just letting someone else by. I'm looking to see who else is on a lap at the moment. We've got Daniel just coming um, over the line, goes P2 for 131.5. Four yep. tenths uh, off of pole there, and an old Manzi right behind him. Yep, the... TYG Rogue is coming to Ooh. the line. Brad treat J JR Bradshaw 2015 going to the top of the 130.789. Very, wow. very, very speedy time there from the Williams. That, that is, that's some serious pace, isn't it? That is some very good pace. Some very good pace indeed. I'm just trying to have a little look who's going to be our next car. I think that must be Days Freak. It's going to be our next car over the line. Mm -hmm. uh, Skull Kid, I was so close to Q2, just need an extra second. Skull Kid, could you pop in the chat? Who are the uh, drivers who got in Q1? Obviously, we missed that one. It would be worth just letting the rest of the stream know. This is also my first time commentating over Division 4, like I've said, so I don't know many of the drivers here. I do recognise some names, like TYG Rogue. Yep. Oh, Immortal to the top, Ooh. even again. Three tenths difference. Big up the what? McLarens. Oof. 130.426. Gravedigger popped himself into P5 with a 130.328 behind his teammate and so still got a few people to set laps mr neon tyg rogue kabuki quick mick and dark shadow still um yet to set a lap time i think T tyg rogue is going to be on no he's not going to be in next car so that's no my shift button's not working. it is it is and he's pushing he is he is indeed he is approaching the he's going through the new section of the track obviously modified from 2022 as he rounds all oh, squirrely from the from mclaren round the final corner from tyg rogue let's see what he does goes p4 very respectable time only a hundredth off of mr adam moore in the ferrari so very 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 uh very close at the, between about uh very equal distances i would say between the top five it is and for q2 this is very close already this is indeed very got close. Quick Mick. Is Quick Mick going to be quick today? Currently starting his, his lap. Mm -hmm. 
We've got Dark Shadow, I believe, coming around the final corner. He's going to be the next one to He's set. invalidated. Hey, that time, oh, he's invalidated. Yeah. So that's going to put him on the back foot and put him on a bit more pressure going into uh, the next few What about Kabuki, uh, his teammate behind, though? Goes P4 with a very nice 131.1. So we've got right. four drivers in the 131 ones there, all fighting yeah. for that P3 spot in Q2. <laughs> Things you love to see. One hundredth between P3 and P5. We do love to see a lot of competition here in RSF1 across all of the divisions. Exactly, yeah. And now it's come down a little bit. I want to welcome, welcome you into the RSF1 Racing League, Mateo. It's good to have mm, you alongside me here. We, we, I, I am here, of course. I didn't introduce myself. JD, I am back again for the three out of four commentaries this week. I don't know what's <laughs> come over me. Uh, so, MT the Mighty with P15, Stars All from P16. Uh, I do not know. How am I pronouncing that? El uh, Elky Valves, uh, P17. Uh, Skullco, P18. Uh, Bright Grit, P19. And Smurf is in P20. Nifty Nazri yep. saying he can't wait to see the Battle of the Bradshaws. Well, I'm seeing one. Oh, in fact, we can see the JR Bradshaw in P2. And the C Bradshaw in P6, the Battle of the Bradshaws. Yep. It's oh, good quick to be good. Mick into P2. And Mr. Neon even to the top as well. I quick Mick, quick, quick. Back here. That's, that's quite quick from the Haas. These... 129.882. I tell you what, these are. Tenths <laughs> ahead of Immortal. Roughly about six tenths ahead of Immortal, who put in a pretty, pretty stonking lap himself. That these are some nice. very quick times for Division 4. Mm. And in Q2 yeah. as well. I'm very impressed with these times here. Indeed. Very much so. Uh, we've got a little, little calm down now as people will now head back to the pits. As Immortal has Eagle retired Clark. in the pits. He's happy with his lap. Uh, well, fair enough. If you're up in P2, I think you'll be I think you'll be safe. I think anybody, well, basically anybody from P6, maybe even Dark Shadow in P5 downwards, Maybe it's got to go again and just make sure they're safe. Possibly. I can't tell here. Quick Mick. Although he's on a lap, he does still look like he's pushing. Mm. I mean, he is flashing because he's not using battery. It, it, he's, yeah. I mean, it might just be a very quick in-lap. Quick Mick yeah. is just very quick. And I wonder how many times yeah. I will use that joke tonight. Yeah. I mean, we have only got six minutes left in the session and it is a one minute... And it isn't nearly near enough a two minute out lap here, so you've got to just maybe you've just got to make sure you get back to the pits and get round in time, possibly. Talk, talking about laps, we've got Daniel P45 in the Haas currently is making his way past turn five now on his out lap. We'll stay on board of him as he makes his way around, getting those tyres nicely warmed up. I don't you want to bring the could... tyres in very nicely. You don't want to overcook them on the outlap. You do equally want to have decent tyre temperature for the first corner, which is obviously a very, very hard and very grip, very grip worthy section. Words. <laughs> grip. Grip needing section. There, there we go. That's there we go. We'll get there eventually. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, as we've noticed, especially throughout this past week of watching and myself taking part racing uh, in Division 2. Tide degradation, De degradation. I can't get my. De yeah, that one is we'll very high here. Other. Yeah, we'll exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, tide temperatures are very high here. It doesn't matter really what you do with your tide pressures. You will notice a lot of slipping and sliding, especially on the rears. It's very rear dependent on a lot of the uh, traction zones out of the corners. Um, you'll find a lot of people quite early on into this. Didn't we're talking less than ten laps? Some tires struggling. It's definitely something to watch out for in the race. We've got some awesome, awesome more people on outlaps. Daniel P45 is about to start his lap, but we've also got C Bradshaw and Kabuki both on outlaps. We've got um, Daniel P45, so we'll have to see what he can do. Down in P11, got to find some time, doesn't he, JD? He does. Currently, he's making his way around turn two and three now as we speak. The little kink of turn four there makes his way down to turn five. He needs a really good exit out of here. The first DRS zone of the two. At Singapore, gets a good exit. Foot flat down, DRS wide open. Gets past the uh, another little kink of turn six, making his way down to turn seven. Now the left-hander, get a good exit here, keep it tight. He does uses all the track on exit. Very nicely done there. Turn eight now, very tight. You can get a little bit slippery on exit, but he doesn't seem to there. Second gear, third gear, fourth, fifth round, turn nine into sector two. 
down the back straight, making his way towards turn 10. This is my least favourite part of the whole track. Turn 10 now, turn 11, the little right-hander. And then we've got this tricky traction zone of turn 12. Manages to keep it planted there, lovely. Into the sharp hairpin of turn 13. Now onto the second DRS straight of the track. Doing well so far. It's looking like an okay lap from Daniel P45. Yes, it is. Maybe up into the top five, I'm thinking right now with his what he's doing. Keeps it within track limits. Very easy place to invalidate because of how the uh, the game is. Well done, Codemasters and EA. Well done for that yeah. one. Ooh, a bit Ooh. wide though at the last corner. Maybe a little bit of a lock up there. That will have cost him a few tenths of a second. Do Got to chuck it into drop. the last two corners. Up to the line. He goes P6. P6. And and, that's probably, and, that, and that little mistake at the chicane probably cost him a little bit. I reckon it did. you think he would... Yeah. It's hard to tell on um, the, the cutoff. What would, you, what would you say your best guess of a cutoff is here? I reckon we're probably looking at a 130 mm -hmm. for Q3 with all the other drivers coming out there. Sorry, a 131 flat, I reckon, is the cutoff. Yes, yeah, so, but yeah, Dark Shadow is on an outlap, so he doesn't feel he's safe, even on a 30.9. Uh, JR Bradshaw is retiring from the session, and Mr. Neon. That's not surprising from the Haas. He is obviously P1 by quite a, quite a large margin, to say the least. He We've is. got Kabuki just coming oh, around the final gone. few corners as well. Yeah, let's see where oh, he see, goes. See, Bradshaw. P2, Ooh, decent lap very Kabuki. nice lap. Very good lap from Kabuki into P2, and that should see him through the final part of qualifying here in Singapore. Let's see who else we've got on that. Got Bradshaw now currently making his way through turn 18 and 19. Little drop of a gear, foot flap down. Can he improve? He does. Goes P5 at 130.6. That should see him safe through to Q3. Yeah, so we've got uh, TYG Rogue at the moment is the person at risk in the McLaren. He's got to find some time to try because people behind him like Gravedigger, Old Mansi, who is actually just making his way towards the line on his own lap, very squirrely, out of the final proper turn and then through the final proper other turns as well into P7. Ooh. We'll have to see whether that's enough. That might be on the bubble with people behind going a bit faster. It really could. We've got a motive carrot starting his lap. I'll tell you what, we'll ride on board with a motive carrot in the Mercedes. Currently sat in P13 in the car zone. He needs to really pull in a lap here. Yes, One thirty two eight as well. He's he's quite off the pace at the moment. He needs to find well over a second if he wants to get himself into Q3. Mm-hmm. He does indeed. We have got multiple people on laps at the moment you've got to be on a lap now 30 just over 30 seconds left in the session so you've got to find some time and you've got to make sure you don't invalidate oh daniel p45 retiring from the session there he's in p9 that might not be enough for him uh we've got tyg rogue making his way to the last few corners he's got to get a lap him doesn't he jd Ooh. oh just 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 held it and let's see goes p2 so he's gonna be safe for he's gonna be into the next part of qualifying but daniel p45 is the person at risk at the moment dark shadow is on the lap at the moment trying to improve his position but Mert the Carrot, people we're four tenths be up on his lap yeah the person not... we're going to be watching here is a motive carrot it's only on a 32 four the is, is it enough uh, it's not. Oh, no, it isn't. It's only a 32-6 for Emotive Carrot, so he's knocked out. We've got Days Freak, Gravedigger, and Mr. Adam Moore still on laps. And they are going to have to try and find some time to get into Q2 as well, aren't they, JD? They are. Gravedigger currently eight tenths up on his lap. This is a great lap from the Aston Martin so far through Sector 2. Making his way down to turn 16 now. Can he find yeah. a little bit more time in Sector 3? Can he push that asset? Oh, he takes a little bit too much care, but keeps it tidy. A lot yeah, of drivers seem to be struggling through 16, 17 today. Yeah, it's a very, it's still a quite a tricky uh, place in the track. He goes P7, and that does not knock Daniel P45. Dark Shadow has finished his lap. He's only P10. So Dark Shadow could be at risk if emotes if mr adam moore or days freak improve their lap times days freak is currently in the drop zone 
up to the it's line. It's not enough. The Ferrari goes it is to enough. the P2. Mr. Adam Moore with a 130.236 oh. put his car into Q3. And that means we've lost Emotive Carrot, Days Freak, Daniel P45, and Dark Shadow by less than a tenth of a second to Old Man Z. Ah, Not just an FYI. Q2. Both Emotive Carrot and C. Bradshaw are sheets. Thank you very much. It's worth noting. I apologize if I have misgendered any, anybody anybody Eng this English. is why i say they every time <laughs> I, I i i say he out of habit and it's, it's, it's a bad habit to have yeah well, I mean, they we are all it's here yeah. it is driving down the straight there we go we can do that you're all it's now we're all, all it you are all it's very good qualifying then very close yeah. it is it's very close i tell you what though i think the stand of the stand out of the show there has to be neon at the top set like a good half a second between him and the next closest car it, uh, it really before did. the second runs came in. Now only three and a half tenths, but even so, it's still quite a big gap, isn't it? It really is, and our drivers that we've lost from qualifying two is Dark Shadow, Daniel P45, Days Freak, and Emotive Carrot. Unfortunately, they won't be joining us for the remainder of this qualifying as we have ten drivers. Ten minutes. I think it's ten minutes. Twelve minutes. Twelve ten. Minutes. Twelve minutes. 10 drivers, 10 minutes sounds so much better. 10 that drivers, makes, 12 minutes. Make, it would what make more sense. can they do? Charlotte Bradshaw. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So, so JD, let me get this straight. So you've done the comms for every single other RSF1 div division this, uh, this week, other than the one you were driving in. Uh, yes. Monday, Wednesday, and today. Good. Damn, can, we, can, we, can we get some uh, can we get some applause in chat for Mr. JD for putting all this work in? It's been the first time in a while an RSF1 stream has been streamed from a PC this many times in one week. I would like mm. to say forever, but I don't know. I don't know the date <laughs> going back far enough. No, there we, we are. Then. P3 has now started. We'll have to see who makes the first moves in Q3. It'll be very interesting as well if people want to save any soft tyres for the race in case, of, in case of a late safety car or anything like that. Talking of which as well, we've had very mixed conditions with weather um, over the past few nights. Um, obviously Division 2 getting away with no weather. Division 1 getting absolutely pelted with full wets. Last night's race, mixed conditions. I wonder if we'll get anything like that today. Yes, it will be very interesting to see whether we get anything like that. We've got JR Bradshaw now on an out lap. And that is we the Mr. To... Bradshaw, to clarify. Yep. <laughs> um... I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Dark Shadow, welcome in. I did not even, I did not even say a gender, thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> I'm just so playing. Please. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Anyway, we've got the flurry of cars out of the pits now. We've got the McLaren of Immortal. We've got the Ferrari of Mr. Adam Moore. We've got the other McLaren of TYG Rogue. And we also have Kabuki all on out laps, and they all, they're all very close to each other, trying to get some uh, tire temps and trying to get some track position as well, because track position is crucial at Singapore. Uh, the dirty air has obviously been reduced with this gen of cars, but it's still there. It is still there, isn't it? It is. It really is. Mhm. Mm yes. Yeah, going got on some board, so it's Rush yeah, going to be our first car. Yes. We've got some more. Uh, cars coming out for out maps as well. The only one still in the pits, uh, Mr. Neon713, uh, our old Manzi, and Quick Mitt in the pits at the moment. They're gonna wait, maybe find a bit of clearer track later in the session. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed. As Fingers uh, crossed. as Bradshaw now comes up to turn 16, 17. Matteo, would you like to take us for a lap of Singapore as I very quickly go empty my bladder? <laughs> That is all good, Mr. JD. That is all good. But the man does deserve it. You've got to make sure around the final corner, you've got to make sure you get the best exit on to the first DRS zone. DRS open. Turn one. You want to clip the inside curve a little bit. Try and run close as you can to track limits, but don't run too close and out of bounds. Turn three. Oh! Bradshaw. Very, very, very big snap of oversteer. Trying to get two trigger happy on the throttle. Continues on his lap, but that will have lost him a good couple tenths of a second. Through turn, the black ink to turn six, up to turn seven. 
very, very heavy braking zone and probably your best overtaking spot of the race. Run it wide a little bit, get close to the wall, get up very close to the wall again through turn eight and in through turn nine, carry the speed. Very, very good so far, apart from that little snap. Make sure you get as close as you can to the wall on the right hand side, flick it in, into this little Mickey Mouse section. You gotta make sure you get the traction down as best as you can. Again, the hairpin run as wide as you can, carry the minimum speed through the hairpin and down now to the down to the end of sector two. He's looking okay at the moment. We'll have to see what this lap produces. Get on the power and then into this newly modified section from obviously 2022. Long straight into turn 16 where we've seen loads of drivers had a few issues today. Misses the curb but goes very wide as well. So it's a bit, a bit of a scruffy lap from Bradshaw and they are going to now come to the line. 131.375 and there is definitely time to find for many of for men for him and probably many of the drivers will be thinking they can go top as well immortal to the top with a 130.587 just showing the track grip is there we've got mr adam moore had a must have had an issue on the battle app as well 130.1503 we've got the mclaren of tyg rogue who's coming to the who's just starting, starting his lap yeah, he's yeah, only got 30 percent battery be. though so He's yeah. going to be a bit shy on his lap. Gravedigger going in P3 for 131.4. And we've got the Alfa Romeo going over Kabuki. Setting the, provi uh, the provisional pole lap of 130.4. A whole That's second the... quicker than Gravedigger at the moment. Yep, that is... There is still pace to find, though, because there was a, a sub-30 lap from Neon earlier in the session. And speaking of Neon, I'm just picking up up going through... The uh, through to the end of seconds of the second sector and now down it's to Miss Bradshaw. Sorry to interrupt you, Miss Bradshaw goes in P3 of a 130.8. So far, the battle, so far, sorry, the battle of the Brad Bradshaws. It's going to be a mouthful saying this. Yeah, Charlotte, got, Charlotte is up on. Yep, we've got uh, Mr. Neon now coming around the final corner, the star of Q2. What can he produce here? 130.057 puts four tenths between him and Kabuki and the Alfa Romeo. But uh, there's still time for him to find there. I think he will be ruining that there's still time to find there. He went two tenths quicker in Q2. So he will be hoping uh, to maybe put a bit more distance just to secure that provisional pole position for the race. Oh, Rogue has invalidated again, so I'm, he's going to be coming into the pits. I can't imagine yeah. he's got any more fuel. No, he, is, he hasn't. Into the pits he goes. Where's old Manzi? Old Manzi is invalidated oh. as well, so he's going to be starting his lap now. The only other driver, apart from the, Mc uh, the McLaren, has not set a lap, so we will go on board with the Red Bull and find out how old Manzi gets along around Singapore. Mm -hmm. He goes on turn three now. Keeps it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that wide exit there. Yeah, I will. T I will tell you this as well. In the Battle of the Bradshaws as well, um, the, uh, the Williams had a. Big, big snap. Chat saw it out of turn. Might have seen it out of uh, turn. Turn number five, I think. Great. And what I could do. Yeah, turn number five. And it was, oh, oh, Manzi. That Ooh. might have been an invalidation again, possibly. It wasn't. The map is still still clear. Okay, very, okay, very, very, it was very, it was very, that must have been inches from an invalidated lap because very, very squirrely on the exit. That's that's fun. We'll follow him still through this little Mickey Mouse section up to the hairpin. Now, we'll take a little bit of a wide line, carry the minimum speed through the corner and get on the power, which is very, Lovely. very He's difficult. He's done that very well. He's done that very it's, well. Yeah, it's probably the most difficult place of the entire track to keep your power down very smoothly and very fast at the same time. As I learned on Tuesday, as I spun the car around and pointed in the wrong direction. That was my race <laughs> over. <laughs> That's fine. We all we all do make those mistakes. Oh mistake. yes, we all make those mistakes. And Singapore, that that hairpin at Singapore, probably one of the hardest. Oh, not the hardest. Old man's he choosing to game. box, so doesn't want to set that lap. There's okay. only four minutes and thirty seconds, so maybe it's just a um, precautionary. Wasn't happy. Or... Wasn't happy of it. New tyres. Yeah, let's yeah, let, make precautionary. Let's make sure we can get new tyres on and get a lap in at the final at the final uh, on the final runs, which will be happening in about. Two to three minutes time. Oh yes. And while we're sat here, we've got this nice little this little break.
We'll have a little reminder of the standings in a little bit more detail. Obviously, like I said earlier, we have Old Manzi currently leading the Drivers' Championship with 106 points. Immortal sat behind him on 95 points. Quick Mick on 92. Mr. Neon on 82. Stars off on 72. Mr. Adam Moore, 61. I mean, I could sit and read them all, but you can see it there. And we've got the Redbourne, 178 points in the Constructors. McLaren close behind him on 155. Alpine MP3 on 121. So definitely uh, looking at more of the drivers, there's some there's some positions that could switch around in just this race, especially looking at the top four. Mm -hmm. Very, very much so. And, I have to, and we've already got someone coming out of the pits for an outlap. We've got Kabuki in the Alfa Romeo. In P2 at the moment is coming out for his first run. So let's see what this brings Kabuki by going out the first of the runners. Let's, let's see. You'll want to bring those tyres in nice and carefully. As you can see, they're going very, very slowly through. El Calvo, uh, man. Good to see you in the chat. Welcome in. Start up with the early upper hand in Q3. Exactly that. I got my mm -hmm. first points in Australia in the wet. Australia wet as well. It's a very tricky race. So we have Australia a potential. We have the best potential circuit on this game and combine it with wetness with with a wet race isn't the best thing. No, so we have a potential wet speed demon, Skull mm. Kid, that we uh, could potentially look out for. Does anyone know if we have any weather in the races? Anyone? Did anyone look in qualifying? We, do we have we, any we indication do, for weather? We, we do not have this information. So who's on comms? So we have someone new on comms with me. Someone new into RSF1. We have um, oh Matteo. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. So hello. So my name is Matteo. Feel free to just call me Matt, though. I partic don't particularly mind. And very, very new to the commentary scene. Very new. Did an SRC social race a couple of weeks ago. But, um, yeah. Thank, uh, J uh, JD gave me the little DM of about, what was it, five, six hours ago saying, hey, do you want to do this uh, RSF1 <laughs> comms thing with me tonight? And I was like, you know what? Sure. There we go. Mateo so, is an absolute natural. We're trying to get him out of there. Any experience is good experience, as my mum always told me. Mm -hmm. Expect, yeah, expect to be honest, uh, chat. Expect to see quite a bit more of me probably doing the commentary for RSF1 because it's going to be a bit I think they'll need help. I think they'll need the help. <laughs> yeah, well, we've, we, it's usually okay for most nights. Uh, I think this evening it's just it's just usually Jake um, who's by himself. Uh, I don't mm. usually catch the Div4 races. Don't don't tell me off. Um, but yeah, no, we're hoping to get Mateo in a lot more a lot more comms. Even as a third um, comps, we don't know. Yep, uh, we've got Kabuki starting his final lap now, and this is this is the time to get your quickest lap in. This is the time when you want to hook everything up in qualifying. Track will be its most grippy as a street circuit. Uh, we've got TYG Rogue as well, just starting his lap, and Old Manzi, and those are the two drivers who don't have a time on the board yet, so they're under pressure not to invalidate. Just notice we had a little bit. There's a little bit of traffic in sector two with the McLaren and Aston Martin there. I don't want to jump on board. I mean, they're, they are both on outlaps. Actually, just looking at it. They are both on outlaps. Yeah, they are. Indeed. Just giving each other some room now, making some space before they start their final laps. Mm -hmm. Kabuki we've looking got, very um, quick so far. Yeah, we've got the Williams of Bradshaw followed by the Aston Martin of Bradshaw, uh, going through to start their laps as well. Uh, we've got Gravedigger, who will be about to start his lap. Immortal has just started his lap ahead of him. And there's... And, uh, yep, we've got uh, Al Mr. Alan Moore. We've got Quick Mick. And we've got Neon still looking to set uh, laps. Still li looking to start their laps. They have just started them now. Uh, Kabuki, Kabuki not will improving. Be yeah, Kabuki not improving. The first of the runners... Oh, he's coming into the and pits. He, he's, and he pits, so that wasn't a good lap. And so Maximum he gets will be P2 in this qualifying session. We'll have to see whether that translates to the front row for the race. No, to oh. Delta to compare with, with Rogue, who is Ooh. now making his way around the last two turns. Not got time set on the board yet. What can the McLaren do? Puts himself oh. P2 with a 130.3. I tell you what, I've just been watching Quick Mick and he had a horrible turn seven, got too much on the curb and went really wide out of it. So that might have been an invalidation. It might not have been, though. We've got old Manzi who puts his a time in to go P6. 
We've got uh, still. We've got Immortal who went very wide. My, I think he might have invalidated all, Immortal possibly. We can and have a look at that in one second. We've got the Battle of the Bradshaws. Bradshaw in the Williams over the line goes P6 or 130.7, and we're, now we're going to have the Charlotte other McLaren. Charlotte has invalidated. I'm pretty sure. Charlotte has invalidated. I'm pretty sure. That's. Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, Charlotte yeah. has invalidated. It's unfortunate. It's unlucky. Grave Digger going Grave up to P2. Digger. Grave Digger into P2. Brilliant. So we've still got Quick. Oh, no, no, quick Mix goes P4. Mr. Neon about to improve even more. Goes to 129.6. Get this guy out of Division 4. What a time from the Haas. Yeah. What a time. He's trying to more. I believe went P P6. Yep, yeah, went P6 at the very end there. But that is a scorching lap from from Mr. Neon. Six tenths. Six tenths. Between him and Aston, between him and the Aston Martin of Gravedigger. That. The only man, the only, per sorry, only person, I should say. Yeah. It. Only person to be into the 129s at all in qualifying. That's some, um, that we good. might see a very, very limited battle at the front <laughs> for the race. Yeah. Right. Now, usually there is a few minute break in between quali and while all the drivers are getting their setup on. So here's a quick little highlight video that I've chucked together from last week's race at China. And it's lights out and away we go. And it's not a bad getaway from the Aston Martin. And he looks like he's going to be leading into turn one. And he is. Rogue up behind him. We've got a few. A quick mix managed to make up quite a few positions. Immortal sort of getting himself bogged down a little bit he's sort of off the racing line he's down to p10 days freaks losing positions a little bit too he's going to go for a move here though alves reading up too quickly and mr neon's got a lot more grip and a lot more speed here and old manzi isn't using his drs to defend is he going to try and come back at him here it looks like there's a little bit of rain coming that the, the ground is looking a little bit damp. Daniel's gone very wide. Has he got damage? I don't see any damage on Daniel's car, but he's got to watch his rejoin. Managing to stick with them all. This the rain hasn't started yet, but it looks like the floor is damp. Do you know what I mean? Brick coming in. What's Brick Grip pitting for? We'll keep an eye out. I think they're at a stage in their race where. They might as well take a risk. And it's hard tyres for Alves. So they're gonna he's gonna try and take those to the end. And it's medium tyres for Brit Grit, so Brit Grit is gonna have to stop again. I think Alves is gonna have to stop again as well, to be honest. Jamie's going for inters. We saw how quickly the track got wet. It was very fast. And Gravedigger's staying out. And that is an Alpine coming in. Who's that? That'll be Quick Mate. No, it's Bradshaw. Bradshaw's coming in. Uh, and there's a Alfa Romeo coming in too. Kabuki's coming in too. It's a good start from Gravedigger. And TYG Rogue has got a brilliant run on him there. What are we going to see from the drivers at the front now? It's pitting time for Gravedigger and for Rogue and for Mick. Neon's giving it another lap. Uh, Immortal's staying out too. And now DRS has been... That just said in Now we're getting a little bit of spray off these tyres. This is full-on intermediate weather now. We'll see what Diverse Jamie can do from Gravedigger. Gravedigger's got a lot more ARS than Jamie. Is at 70% for Jamie's 37. So he's got that to take into consideration. And Diverse Jamie's coming in for a new set of Inters then. Does look like Motive Carrot is going to get a move done on Bradshaw. So Rogue must have made a little mistake. Uh, Immortal's getting quite close to Mr. Neon and Rogue is quite far back. Old Manzi's quite far off of them too. I think Kabuki and Jamie have somewhat jumped the gun a little bit with that tyre change though. And now Diverse Jamie, speaking of, has managed to pull off a nice little overtake on MT. The might, but MT is really struggling out there. That's why those uh, changing positions there.
And there's Mr. Neon going to make a move on Jamie. Oh, it looked like he was going to jerk his steering wheel into Jamie then. We've lost Rogue. Where have we lost Rogue? Oh, he just lost it and hit the barrier, I think. That's, yeah, MT. Yeah, he's lost it and hit us in the barrier. P9 now. And both using their ERS. Styles is breaking very early there. And got on it wrong there. Styles under pressure from Kabuki. He's got to watch his rejoin. He does rejoin somewhat safely, but Kabuki is going to get in full. There was nearly contact there with the tyres. And Days is going to have a better drive. Now, oh, Days has lost the car a little bit. And MT the Mighty's too far away to make to be able to capitalise on it. Kabuki's now going to have a look at Diverse Jamie. And we've got old Manzi's car. Um, is he going to wait for... Oh, no, he's... Getting... Oh, no, I thought he was going to go for it then, but... Gonna wait right till the end, and now he goes. And Quick Mix gonna win, unless there's a big mistake in this final corner. Quick Mix driven. Well, I think Grove Digger's been maybe the most consistent driver, but Quick Mix got it done when it counted. It's P1 for Quick Mix, P2 for Grove Digger, P3 for Mr. Neon, P4 for Motor Carrot, Days Freak gets P5, Pemrose P6, Styles P7, Mr. Adam P8, Brick Grick crosses a 9 for P10, and old Manzi. And for the first time this week, we have managed to have the introduction video, the highlight video, and come as soon as the formation up here. Oh, oh, it's beautiful, guys. It's absolutely beautiful. We are back then on board with our drivers. We'll run you through the tyres. We have our top 10. That is Mr. Neon Gravedigger, TYG Road, Quick Mick, Kabuki, Mr. Adam Moore, Immortal, uh, Jay Bradshaw, or Manzi, and Charlotte Bradshaw. I'm just going to say Charlotte because I can't read that as C Bradshaw. Charlotte Bradshaw, all on the hard tyres. And we've got Dark Shadow on the mediums, Daniel P45 on the hards behind him, Days Freak on the mediums, Emotive Carrot, and MT Hitman on the hards, Stars Orphan on the mediums. The only single driver hoping to make a very quick lunge at the beginning of this race. I can't pronounce that. Is that Lauves? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Lauves on the soft tyres. Skull Kid L on the hard. L. L. Alves. I'm thinking. Yeah. Hopefully, so, I haven't got the wrong it's... Skull Kid on the hard. And the bottom two drivers, uh, Brick Grit and Smurf on the medium tyres. I'm looking forward yes. to this race. Yes, uh, I am too. Uh, interesting there, the after tyre of Alves. Uh, on the soft tires he's got to make very very quick early progress because those softs will those softs will melt faster than i can say the word the <laughs> yeah they, fair enough they they tire wear is very high around singapore and the softs do melt very quickly there we can see the possible strategies jd i wasn't even looking i was on my phone i'm not gonna lie to you nice <laughs> So we've got. I'm sure we'll get on. treated with that a few times in the race. Yeah, we've got. Uh, should we've got two options? You've got a hard. You've got a hard to a medium or a medium to hard on the one stop. Or if someone's feeling really bold, they can try and do a two stop and try and overcome the tire deficit. Obviously, Singapore a very long lap and uh, tire grip is essential around some of these corners. So I have to see if anyone's going to take the punt at that. But meanwhile. They are lining up on the grid, doing their burnouts, making sure tyres are in the right temperature window, especially the rear tyres for the start. Uh, oh, quick Mick was disqualified from the session there. So parked a little bit outside of his grid box. That's going to be a bit That's going to be a bit interesting for him at the start, isn't it, JD? It is, as we're currently on board with Smurf. The last car on the grid to line up into his box. It gets in his box. And here we go then. Two lights, yep. three lights, four and five. Away we go for Division 4, the last race of the week. And Mr. Neon has had a great start. Grave Digger trying to stick with him. We've got three wide cars behind. We've got the McLaren, the Alpine and the Alfa Romeo all getting a bit scrappy there. Through turn two and three. Quick Mick and TYG Rogue. Giving each other just enough room as they make their way down to turn five. Oh, TYG Rogue. I'm just going to say Rogue. It's a mouthful. Has to sit behind Quick Mick at the minute, who is looking very quick. There's the first time of this race so far. Mr. Neon already made an, oh. end, an eight tenth gap to P2. Yeah. 
yeah, one quick big pun. I'm going to be counting them this entire event, and we'll see how many uh, appear at the end of it. Uh, seems like people had... Oh, oh we got Days there, Freak! A, right, we ran an issue at the back. Days Freak is out of the session. That's a BSC. Yeah, we've, got a we've got a virtual safety car. They all behaved themselves through the first uh, three turns, and then, well, first six turns even, and then looks like it's come... Uh, come looks like there's been a problem at turn number seven. Uh, we've got Charlotte Bradshaw in the Aston Martin dropping down to P19. So that's an awful start, isn't it? Yeah, we'll have a look at our biggest gainers and losers. Smurf up six positions so far. Our biggest loser is Charlotte, like you said, down nine. Not been the most ideal start for themselves. Uh, no, it isn't. So How's it go? Green, green flag running. Take it away. Yep, we are back under green flag running again. Mr. Ne uh, Neon has already got a 1.1 second lead, but you have got a battle for P2, though. Quick Mick down the inside of Gravedigger. Very simple, very easy. And he picks up the throttle nicely. Very, very simple, easy move there for him, wasn't it? It was. Got that done. Mr. Neon setting the fastest lap of the race on 144.6. He's looking very quick. Already pulled a 1.5 second gap to the rest of the pack. Barring safety cars, that gap could be 20 seconds by the end of this. Are we about to see Max Verstappen domination in RSF 1 Division 4? We could very well do. Uh, I yeah. believe Charlotte did have a little bit of a tangle with Days. Well, we weren't on board at the time, but we saw, saw a little bit of chaos into Turn 7, where you currently see your leader going now. Everyone seems to calm, be calming down a minute, sitting behind each other. Yep, uh, we've got about an equi equi equidistant gap between uh, all the cars from a bat from Quickmix all the way down to uh, Old Manzi and, and even Mr. Animal and Dark Shadow in P9. So the top 10 is very close. And I have to say, Rogue is looking very racy on the back of Gravedigger. And he might be wanting to push for a move and try and chase after Quickmix. Yeah, he's very close. He's had a good good exit out of turn 13 there he's burning his battery he's going to the inside he's looking to make the move into turn 14 he has cuts the curb that's definitely uh, got to be a warning there for track limits and yep definitely a track limits warning. and what that's allowed is kabuki all over the back six of six of those out sit thinks better of it sits behind for the minute as they make their way through turn 16 and 17. Yeah, it was a little over ambitious there from Rogue. Um, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't even that over ambitious. Just slightly misjudged the corner, if anything else. He had a, he had the car alongside, and just turned in way too early. Meanwhile, yeah. we have got a battle between uh, Dark Shadow and Mr. Ed, Mr. Adam Moore. Dark Shadow up the inside, battling through turn uh, number three. Um, Dark Shadow on the medium tyres, so he's gonna gonna try and make progress early because before he has to get off those mediums and into the pits for probably a set of hard tyres or another set of mediums at uh, about lap 10, probably, yeah, I'd like the, to think. Days Freak in the chat saying that he tried to turn the car around and unfortunately had lost his will. As we see Dark Shadow going a bit wide there off the exit of turn 7, potentially a track limit there for himself. Yep, indeed. Or herself. We're not judging it. Is all, <laughs> it is all very close, though. I have to say, it is all very close between the top 11 uh it's only um um it's only manos in the mercedes in p12 who has is outside of a second within that top 11 apart from neon who has now pulled a 2.7 second lead to make who's also pulled a two second gap to gravedigger meanwhile we've got rogue again looking looking to try and get past things a bit better of it this time into the hairpin uh, oh he's now, making a move now though Yep, yep, he is indeed making a move now to the inside. No competition, is it? Gravedigger uh, down to P5 from P2. And now Rogue can set up our set off, uh, after quick mick in the uh, Alpine. We'll have to see whether Gravedigger can come back at the McLaren, though. You're not reading that as P5, are you? Just to make sure we're reading the same things. Gravedigger P4, yeah. yeah. I'm reading Gravedigger P4. I might have just missed that. Right, that's that. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just sometimes it likes to give us two different things on e either one of our screens. Yay! We love this. We love, Good we on love EA. The, we, we love it. We love the EA. We love EA. We love F123. As they win. called it on SRC. It's many of EA's features. 
as we are now running aboard with Gravedigger, he's trying to keep in touch with Rogue. He's now trying to make his push 2.1 seconds back from Quick Mick. Can he close that gap down? As we see Smurf, the first of our drivers to pick up a track limit penalty. Three seconds for the Ferrari driver there. Not yeah, really good early on with only four laps going. We've got, it seems to have a bit of a kerfuffle at the back of the grid here. We've got a lot of cars all bunched up. Charlotte making her way up into P16. We must have missed some overtakes going on at the back there. Like, like real F1, the back markers get ignored. <laughs> we try we try and keep on board with whoever the closest battle is. We do. We try. We do. It's very hard earlier on in the race when everybody is battling. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. The, I, think, I think we are getting into the stage where they're all starting to settle down now. We're going to sort of just protect the tyres a little bit more. Obviously still try and make moves, but tyre wear and tyre conservation is the number one priority here in Singapore. It is. Oh, Manti getting a bit close behind Kabuki here. Yeah, and Gravedigger is almost dropping Kabuki out of DRS as well. He's, get, he's sticking with the DRS of Rogue. And uh, uh, Kabuki just looks like he's falling back a little bit. And we've got Skull Kid, the second, uh, second of our drivers, to receive a three-second penalty for track limit. Uh, we also have Rogue as well. He's closing in on Quick Mech. He's now down to 1.5 seconds is the gap. Um, they're all kind of equidistant from each other as well, uh, aren't they, JD? They are, they are. And there's nothing like coming to watch the RSF on comms and getting nice big words like that that I cannot repeat because my mouth will have a fit. Equidistant, did you say? Equidistant. Ah, <laughs> I know what it means, but I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. I... And to, to answer stuff in chat, uh, Mr. Neon isn't on PC, that is a PlayStation player. I can also yeah. confirm, and this isn't being big headed, I am quicker than that. He is, he is not abnormal, he is not an alien. He is just quicker than the grid this evening. Yep, I mean, there are just tracks that people excel at uh, on, this F1, on this F1 game, just suits your driving styles, suits your. Um... Suits, suits how you drive and things like that. I know exactly. you're. I know. I know you're particularly good at places like Vegas and Qatar. So. Yes. So. But, but Singapore, yeah. on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> As we not saw Immortal a few turns ago, actually it looked like he took a track limit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, Grave Digger still keeping with um, Rogue at the moment. Uh, Rogue stopped a few tenths on that lap. Uh, Dark Shadow on the medium still isn't able to get past Mr. Adam Moore, getting very close to him through turn three but then just loses it a little bit on the exit again they're all just sort of spaced out about like just half a second off of each other however all immortal is now out of the drs of kabuki so it is now a battle between top uh the top five for the final po between third fourth and fifth for the final podium place and um then from p6 downwards to to get the rest of the points Yep, yeah. um, it's nice to see another familiar face. Mr. Resilience in the chat, it's good to see you. Is Mateo nice. doing Division 2? No, he's just on com commentary for the moment. I've, he will be Division I'm, 2 if he drives, though. I can I can assure I've, you of that. I Yes, I will have to. I, I, certainly, now that uh, college is in its last uh, week, uh, but the next week will be my last week Ooh. of college, so I, uh, I, may have, I may have some time for some uh, for a little bit of Div 2, possibly. We'll have to see. What to do? Div, 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 Division 2 has comms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The team's only in as a as, as a common reserve at this point. It's yeah, it's quite a team. Mm -hmm. But we have jumped in last minute. Yep. I tell you what, they're all yep. just they're all just sitting in there. They're just have a little quick flick through battery. I tell you, Rogue is not doing very good for battery at all. He's almost flashing. He's almost he letting Grave Digger know behind. He has not got any left. Is Grave Digger going to look to make a move here into turn one? He closes his DRS early. He chooses to stay behind. He's he's sitting behind the McLaren. Yeah, this is I some think smart he wants, racing. He's, he's just trying to put um, he's just trying to, trying to put Rogue under pressure more than anything else because um, Rogue and Rogue to answer your question, to answer your um, little thing about ba about his battery, it's probably because he just burned it all at the start when he was making. Yeah, he is. He's flashing. He's so, let the Aston Martin know that he hasn't got any battery left now. That's a dangerous thing to do. Yep. Is he all oh, Grave Digger looking maybe? I thought He's Rogue being much him. more conservative than I thought. So if I was in the Aston Martin's position here, knowing that McLaren is clearly a lot slower here, 
I'd get past mm -hmm. it. I need to get past it and, and try and close down the gap to Quick Mick, who's 2.5 seconds ahead of the McLaren. Quick Mick, by the way, having a bit of a lonely race, uh, along with the leader, four seconds back off Mr. Neon. Uh, I had to say, though, that gap hasn't changed from since when Quick Mick overtake it. Oh, no! Oh. That was... Same. Well done to Rogue. How the hell you didn't crash into the... Into the... Uh, into the Anderson Bridge there. I will never know. Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh it oh, touches! Contact. Oh! Contact. No! Contact between Kabuki and Rogue. And Gravediggers is the um, is the big benefactor of that, as is Old Immortal, because they've gained up positions. Kabuki just was going for the move and a bit too eager on the brakes and just tapped Rogue round. Oh, that's, that is so uh, unfortunate for Rogue. Very unfortunate. It? And we've got a bright grip retiring. That's we've at got, turn 14. Oh, and that is a safety, a safety car. car. We've got a safety car. Oh, it looked like Rogue was going to come into the pits then, but he hasn't done so. So now they all get to slow down and the leader Neon's has gone gap. past the safety car, which is important. So they can, Make they can still box. Oh, a Smurf picks up a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, that, he's a bit, and he's, I might don't know if I'm seeing that. He's going onto a, is he going onto a set, another, another set of soft tires. We've got a few more pit stops as well. We've got a star, star, a star Stars Orphan. Orphan. Stars, Stars Orphan. Stars Orphan. Stars Orphan, thank you. <laughs> Going onto the hard tyres, we've got Skull Kid onto the medium tyres, and we'll have the Alpha Tauri. Yet yeah, that's not a surprise. El Alves off of the soft tyres onto the mediums. And that's actually worked out well for him because he's now on a set of medium tyres and can possibly go for another set of mediums to go to the end after this pit stop. Uh, we've got Neon. Uh, in the lead, but just making his way through to the end of sector two. So, it'll be interesting to see what some of the leaders do if they're on the hard tyre. Surely they've got to stay out at least, haven't they? Yeah, no, definitely. Sorry about the poor screen here, guys. I'm just closing. We had a little bit of lag. I'm just closing that. It should all be fine now. Yeah. I wonder, I, wonder, also, I wonder what the rest of the medium runners are going to do. People like Dark Shadow on the mediums, are they. That, do you, would you say they come in for a slightly earlier stop? Oh, I think I would, but that's because I know the tyres here. Mm. I'd e I'd even be tempted on the hards at this point to put on a new set of tyres. Yeah, we'll have to. Well, we'll have to see. Well, it looks like Neon has gone through. Yes, as has M Quick Mick, Gravedigger, Immortal, Kabuki. Old Mamsy is in though in the Red Bull, so he's the first of the hard runners to jump into the box. And Dark Shadow on the mediums is also coming into the pit. One goes on to the Red Bull. Set of medium tyres. And, ooh, a little bit, a little bit delayed there on the release. Um, and, ooh, that's very interesting. Dark Shadow onto a set of soft tyres. That is, that's, that's Along with Smurf behind him. The, that's, the Ferrari that's on the softs as well, so... Interesting. I... I don't, I, I do not know much about uh, Singapore, Singapore in terms of tyre strategies, but Soft that, is brave. Seems, that seems peculiar to me. It's a very brave strat. I'm just going to, I mean, feel free to rest your, rest your, rest your voice as well. Mm -hmm. but I will be back once the sift car gets going again. Yep, oh, I'll give you a shout when you need to. Oh, I've got the stream up, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got music for them, it's all right. That's all good then. <laughs>
safety not. All right, there's a safety car coming in this lap. Mm -hmm. uh, we had another pit stop during the safety car. A motor carrot came in from the hard tyres to form a set of medium tyres uh, lap into the safety car. Uh, so, that was a very interesting decision from that Mercedes. And I'd have to say, Mr. Murph isn't having the best Ooh. of days. Mr. In Adam the Morley Ferrari. in the session there. Bro has collected uh, 11 seconds of penalties. I think Mr. Neon has gone. Yes, he has indeed. So we are back to green flag running here at the Singapore Grand Prix. Uh, Neon crosses the line to start lap, lap 11. And it is uh, now half a second back to quick make who now, now that he's Mr. much Marmot. closer to Neon. Oh, oh no, is AI, okay. is AI hitting him? Oh, oh what's no. happened? Oh no. Oh, oh no, no. Poor Mr. Adam Moore. Poor Mr. Adam Moore. Oh, he's changing his front wing as well. So. Oh, maybe did he well. did he get wing damage and just leave the session then out of something worth noting? We might have had a might have had a, just a rage quit. We don't know. All right, on know. board with the other drivers. We've got some more battling going on behind us. Yeah, I have to say, quick Mick will now be thinking he can challenge uh, Mr. Neon in the house now that he's because he was keep, he was keeping the gap at the same distance. Um, so we'll have to see whether he can keep up with the Haas to try and put a challenge on him. Uh, the people we're going to have to be watching though is Old Manzi and um, also oh, Dark Shadow. Oh, Ooh, Dark Shadow almost going for the move there. Look at this superior grip of the soft tyres compared to the mediums. And is he going to go for a cent? No, he's he going to wide. He's going to try and get... Oh, it nearly pulled oh. the back. He gets a little bit slippery on the exit there. Couldn't yeah. quite get the traction needed out of turn 13. Yep. Those drivers on the softs and the mediums, the new ones, obviously, they'll be wanting to make progress towards the hard runners who didn't come in. Oh, Dark Shadow gets a three second time penalty for track limit. That is not great news for him in the uh, greater. Oh, as we uh, see, moves to right with the train. McLaren and the Mercedes. Oh, oh it's three. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, man's going get caught up in that, and Dark yeah. Shadow benefits and gets past it. Oh, man's going wide. Oh, very close it's a very intense fighting it's three wide into turn one that's not gonna work well it basically doesn't but bro gets around the outside and it seems like they've all come out of that unscathed we've got dark oh. shadow empty might get all sorts Manzi out of shape as well old manzi has got uh, is dropping back a little bit as well we've got dark shadow now ahead of old manzi now he's going for the move on bro so well, that was that was very tight battle. Wasn't it, JD? It was, and it's not finished yet. Oh, as we see Rogue going very wide, lost out some time. Oh. It cut Smurf trying to stick his nose around the outside. Oh, Smurf, oh, Smurf put it in the barrier. Smurf has hit the barrier on the exit of turn eight. Oh, he's lost his wing. He's lost his wing. Oh, oh, he's no. gone. I'm surprised that's not brought out a safety car. We've got yellow, yeah, yellow flags. Nothing flags. more of it than that. I'm surprised that didn't bring out even a BSC. Mm. It was it was very interesting. Uh, so now we've got Charlotte Bradshaw, who was la who was, who was nearly last remember, but that one is now on the brink of challenging for tenth place. Uh, and in the, the battle, battle of the Bradshaws, obviously we have the other Bradshaw. Sorry to interrupt you. Up in P6 currently, not a big gap in between them at all. If Charlotte can get a foot down here and win this battle of the Bradshaws, something it we absolutely love to see. If nothing, if something, if if something's happening, feel free to interrupt me, mate. Oh, Kabuki is into the pit lane. Lap 13 of um of 31, and Kabuki, the first of the runners to pit from the hard tyres under yep. non-safety car conditions. Let's and, have a look uh, at the stops as well. So we've got yep. half, Ooh, over half the grid. Front wing change. We've got a front Ooh. wing change. Okay, maybe that would indicate the earlier pit stop as we've got Smurf now retiring in the pit lane. That's not a, it's not a surprise from Smurf, honestly. He um he got the damage and he also had eleven seconds of penalties as well. Three Enough. second two three second penalties and a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Not a good day for Smurf and uh, he has left the session. And a couple of things have just happened there, whilst you've been speaking, and Rogue after pushing his duck has finally now picked up a track limit penalty. And then as we come on board, we saw Charlotte making a Charlotte, Charlotte making a move past Charlotte. McLaren up into P9. 
I'm yeah, getting everyone's yeah. sexes wrong and their names, apparently. But we yes. move on. Charlotte now making her challenge up towards Daniel P45. 2.3 seconds ahead. We really get a foot down here now. The battle I'm watching. And yeah, ooh, old man's he trying to get the exit against uh, against the other Bradshaw in the Williams. Just trying to go around the outside into the hairpin. The Haas as well of Daniel P45 trying to go around the outside. And man, and uh, old Banzi gets his up, gets himself up into P6. Uh, Dark Shadow on the soft tyres in P5, and then up uh, the battle for the podium place between uh, Gravedigger and all Immortal, and Immortal uh, will be uh, continuing on for the next few laps. Uh, just onto lap 14 now. Uh, the gap out in front two seconds, and the first uh, battle we've got is between the Haas of Daniel P45 and the Williams of Bradshaw. I have to see what's going to happen in the rest of this race. Nearly at half distance, aren't we, JD? Yeah, we are, and we've had two safety cars now. So we've still got three left. Oh, no, we did have a VSC. So potentially only two left. Skull Kid now picks up another three second time for uh, Oh, we've got Daniel P45 making a move up into yeah. turn seven there. Guess the move done. Beautiful very, overtake, very that controlled. Was a beautiful little also, that was a great lunge also, and kept the car stopped. Yeah, also, I was going to say one safety car. Sure, there was only one safety car. Is there only one? I, oh, yeah, sorry. I one safety car, one. one safety car, one VSC. So that's two. We've got three left. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I think it's five, the limit, anyway. Yeah. I keep getting uh, it wrong all the time. I, I think RSF1 comms and driving has killed you this week, JD. It has, it has. I've not <laughs> done that. I, I've done that much actual, uh, like much actual driving this week. Oh, is Immortal is sticking up the inside. He's been given the room. Yes, and Martin giving him all the space there, but does he get the better exit? It's very he does. Tight. He's burning some battery. He sticks himself on the outside. Gets the move so, done before turn 16. Gets the car stop. Tucked in. Lovely. Of course, what this has invited is this is like a dark shadow on the superior soft tyres who still have the better grip compared to the old hard. And even if they were old, better compared to the old hards. And look at that immediately. Gravedigger went to defend against Dark Shadow, who's going around the outside into oh. turn one. In very tight, he gets forced off the track. And now rejoins side by side. Oh, oh no! He gets a three second penalty. Oh no. Dark uh, so Gravedigger went all sorts of out of shape in turn one, took too much curb, which pushed him forward. That's then hit Dark Shadow, and they've gone side by side through turn three. Dark yeah, Shadow now still giving up the fight. Is he going to. No, he sits behind. Yeah, that was very, very tight battling, and this has invited old Manzi. It's very, it, that is very um, something the drivers have always got to be aware of, uh, is don't battle too hard, otherwise you'll just let your opponents catch up. Singapore is a track where if you battle too hard, your opponents will catch up. Dark Shadow got the better exit out of that corner, and he does chuck it up the inside into where the old Singapore swing used to be. And also, what we just missed as well was uh, Rogue just came in and boxed for a new set of mediums. Hoping mm. to take them to the end. I'll tell you now, they will, but they will not feel good in the slightest. So potentially another pit stop for Rogue. As we see, oh, old Manzi, they're having a little bit of a look on the back of Dark Shadow. Yeah, those old hard tyres are fading now, aren't they, JD? As we see uh, old Manzi on the inside. He's going to be wanting to stick with Dark Shadow because he can make the move uh, on Dark Shadow once the soft tyres wear out. Um, yeah, and Old Manzi did have to stay behind Grove Digger there. Um, and Immortal is in the podium places, but is being hunted down by Dark Shadow. The closest battle we've got is between the Rebel and the Mercedes of uh, Stars Orphan and... Um, I, the Mercedes, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name out of out of pure respect for the person. I'll probably... Empty uh, Hitman. Empty Hitman, there we go. My, my brain is fried on a third. It's all right. Sometimes you, you just can't read names. <laughs> so it just takes another eye. Just, yeah, it does indeed. But we do see Stars Orphan in this Mercedes sandwich at the moment. He needs to try, needs to try and get out of the sandwich. I'll tell you, it's, it's probably the worst sandwich I'd want to be on on track. Is he going to yep, look to make a movie? He does. He's making a movie up into turn yeah. seven. Oh, gets out broke a little bit. Has to concede that, that corner. Didn't that, quite have the confidence. That, yeah, it looked like he was all, all fully alongside. We've got, got a yellow. Got a yellow. No, I wonder what that is. And it's Gravedigger. Oh, Gravedigger's had a spin or it's been spun around. Oh, we weren't watching on board, but I think some, well, something must have happened. 
but to Gravedigger, it looks like he thinks they've got unscathed without damage. Yeah, it doesn't appear that, to have anything. But that isn't that that's lost him uh, many many places down to P14 in the race. So it's not great. Uh, at the front, uh, Neon Ooh. still in uh, the lead from Quick Mick with by two and a half seconds. It's another two seconds back to Immortal. And the gap is being held a second. Stars Orphan getting a three-second time penalty for track limits. As we see, Dark yeah, Shadow nearly hit the wall. We've got Immortal coming into the pits now. Yes, indeed. And this is the ideal time if you're on the hard tyres to come into the pit. Uh, to get onto a set of medium tyres. So the uh, so the strategy will be if the medium tyre runners uh, at the, in their final stint will be able to get uh, up to the back of the people like Old Manzi. In, who pitted for obviously for mediums under the safety car. So yeah, yeah, it'll be me, very sorry. interesting. Yeah, no, it will. Mm -hmm. Where is Immortal going to come out? Hopefully he's not going to be in too much traffic. It looks like he's going to be nice and clear. Comes out P14 behind Kabuki. Yeah. Good it's... little gap behind him. He's gonna. He's not going to want any traffic. He's going to want to use those mediums now. Get the undercut on Quick Mick and Mr. Neo on ahead. Yep, Stars Orphan has also come in to the pits again, and he and they've put on another set of medium tyres. We have got Neon still extending that gap out, gap out in front, and Quick Mick, I've only just realised, has got a penalty for oh, track limits. He must have so, only uh, recently got that one, then. Must have only recently got that, because I... I didn't even see it come that. up. <laughs> Neither did I. We were, I think we were too focused on the pit stops, but... Um, yeah, this keeping an eye on the leader to see if yeah. he responds off of uh, Immortal's pit stop there. Yeah, I think he had a decent enough gap. I reckon he could continue on for another lap if he were, if he wanted to. But we Can we point something speak. out? Ignore everything else that's going on in this race. We have the Battle of the Bradshaws on screen at the moment. We've got Charlotte right behind the Williams of J.R. Bradshaw. The Battle of the Bradshaws <laughs> is back on, ladies and gentlemen. We have Quick Mick into the pit lane. Uh, he's the one who's going to be responding to um to uh immortal who pitted for obviously for the set of mediums uh one lap ago oh see how close he comes out because both the, the bradshaws in the pit yeah because if the undercut is powerful here neon actually could be under pressure if the tire advantage is that strong we've got yeah we've got two bradshaws in as well as immortal coming um, down the start finish straight yeah. now past the pit exit mm -hmm. finds himself in p10 after Oh, look at look Those, how close oh, Immortal is. Oh, I know. Quick, is. Quick Mick is right in front of him. Look how Immortal, close Immortal, with the... these warm, already warmed up tyres, compared to Quick Mick, he's only going to take about half a lap to warm up. Can Immortal do something? Can, can he dump his battery? Can he get past? Make use of while he's here in DRS. Uh, Doesn't think... seem to have a straight line. No, no it's... Um, but, yeah, that's... I'll tell you what, that is very interesting. Uh, that's very interesting uh, information, though. Neon. If he doesn't put his best lap in now, he might be in a bit of trouble uh, on the outlap because Quick Mick is on new tyres on this outlap and is now got him up to temperature at this point in time. So Neon is going to have to pump in his best lap and surely he's going to have to respond this lap. If he doesn't, I'll be very surprised. We'll soon see. Meanwhile, we missed it. Charlotte gets past JR Bradshaw as well. Yep. Running about um, Neon, yeah, he does come in now. Yeah, Neon does come in. He's going to try and Dark Shadow following. And yeah, Dark Shadow following. Prob wonder what Dark Shadow will be onto another set of media, a media set of mediums, a set of softs. So it'll be very interesting to see. So now Old Manzi takes over the lead of the, Sing of the Singapore Grand Prix. In comes Neon. Set of mediums. Looked like a very simple stop there. Set of mediums for Dark Shadow as well as a new wing. Yes, as. Yep, we've got Daniel P45 as well. The double stack's not going to help him. But I think the main thing is where is Quick Mick and Immortal going to be? There, and look at that. There, look at that. Quick Mick is ahead of Neon. That is the power of the undercut here at Singapore. Right there, two and a half second gap has been overhauled on to lap 19 now. And, we'll have to, and Neon is going to have to now fight his way back through if he wants to get back past. That's very interesting, isn't it, JD? Yeah, it is. That is a, a mega, mega undercut. Lap 16, yep. I believe, is the ideal time for a one-stop round here. That's not including any safety cars or VSCs, obviously. Um, Although, this is definitely well, one to stay on board. Quick Mick now gets past the Alves. 
and that is crucial because this is into a section where the, of the track where the grip is very important and Neon will be held up slightly behind this behind this Alpha Tauri and he's just losing time behind him isn't he? He, he is. Will he will oh. take superior grip. Oh no! Does that Mr. Adam more into the barriers? I think... Look no, like that was La Alves, La Alves uh, right in front there. Just went yeah, wide. Doesn't appear to have any damage. It just went very wide at 10 13. Yep. What well, that has Indeed. now enabled Mr. Neon. There isn't a cushion yep. now. Quick Mick needs to get his foot down and be quick. Yeah, look at that, though. He's got the 1.2 second lead. He's now within DRS range of, Kabu of uh, Kabuki. Old Manzi coming back into the pits again. So now Emotive. So Emotive Carrot now, who was. Uh, who was very, very far down the field. It's now in P1 by 3.6 seconds to Quick Mick. We've not, we've not spoken about yeah. Emotive Carrot much. On 10 yeah. lap old medium, so definitely on the older oh, tyre compared quick. to the rest. Sorry to interrupt there, JD. You quick carry. Mick went for a move up the inside of turn five on uh, Kabuki. He wanted to get the move done as quickly as possible. And uh, now he is into second place. And um, Mr. Neon will be wanting to make a move very quickly against Kabuki and I believe and um, everyone's just I getting out of the way he's, uh, yeah he's got <laughs> yeah, oh, out of the way he's been getting he's been getting getting given red carpet either that or people are just shaking behind him but we now see Mr. Neon make that charge down 1.2 seconds back from Quick Mick who is only two seconds back from Motive Carrot don't forget Quick Mick on that three second time penalty that he's going to have to think about coming into this race so he really and, does need to get his foot down here and another thing to point out is Quick Mick barely has any battery i think he's got about 10 percent less than 10 percent left now he's flashing and meanwhile we've got a battle between uh, immortal and kabuki uh, immortal very simple gets around the outside of kabuki who i'm pretty sure is now thinking uh who is thinking probably uh just let's not hold up hold up these leaders they aren't our fight we've got rogue coming up the inside or coming around the outside sorry mr adam moore who also does make way uh, emotive carrot is into the pit lane and make a set of soft tyres possibly from here, JD? Um, Softs are still a push, but you've got to give it a go and hope for safety. No, there's going to be a set of mediums. No, oh, that's very interesting. So I perhaps, perhaps no thought... sets of softs left? Um, no, maybe, maybe waste them all in qualifying. No, I think I think mediums in this position, they're probably your strongest tyre uh, to go uh -huh. for with, with 10 laps left. JD um, is the tire guru here, so I'm going to I don't know about that. take his bluff. He's the, he's the tire guru out of us two. I'm going to take his word for it. <laughs> Mr. Neon goes purple through sector one. He's on an absolute push right now. Only four tenths back from Quick Mick as they make their way through sector two. Round turn nine. Down towards turn ten. The little tricky section. Turn ten now. Turn eleven. Oh, the hash is all over the back of him. Yeah, it's the... Yeah, Neon is much quicker. And obviously, he's probably using his battery as well at this point in time. But Quick Mick will probably be wanting to just defend as much as well. Because also, he'll also, you know, want to back him maybe up. He'll want to back uh, Neon maybe up into Immortal just to um, to put a bit of pressure on the Haas. But is there any way he can defend? I, I honestly. I honestly don't know. I think if I was in his position, it, this this is obviously if I knew his battery, I'd let him overtake, sit behind, recharge my own battery, wait until the last few laps at the end of the race, and then charge and dump it all. But that's having confidence in your own pace. I mean, he's still flashing now. He's not going to be doing himself any favours by sitting in front. He's just going to allow Mr. Neon to sit and charge his own battery up to do the exact same thing that I just mentioned against Quick Mix. So it's, it's a bit of a tricky one. It is indeed. Further back, um, we've got Rogue. Yeah, we've got uh, Dark Shadow overtaking Mr. Adam Moore in the uh, Ferrari. So, as the top ten... Oh, we've got a battle for the lead here. And, well, I say we well, I say we had a battle for the lead. And it lasted uh, about 200 metres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just uh, missed it. Was, it. <laughs> we, and we just missed it. And it was, but it wasn't wasn't anything to shout about massively. Neon just kind of flew by. Um, Skull Kid was retired. That's Skull in the pits. Skull That's in the Skull pits. Retires. Skull Kid Ooh. retires in the pit lane. Uh, to give you a top 10 roundup at the moment, we have uh, Neon, Quick Mick, Immortal, Rogue. We have Kabuki, then Dark Shadow, uh, Mr. Adam Moore, uh, Charlotte Bradshaw, 
uh, Old Manzi NP9, obviously on the newer tyres, and then Daniel P45 in P10. So we've got, we've got, ooh, we've, ooh, we've got a little move here from Charlotte Bradshaw going for the move on Mr. Adam Moore round the outside. Very simple. The DRS look, working very effectively there. And Old Manzi will be looking on those new tyres to capitalise on Mr. Adam Moore's uh, failing tyres now. Um, we'll have to see how quick he can get, he can get past that Ferrari. Uh, Mick. A quick make is staying within DRS of Neon, so that is crucial. Maybe he is just charging up his battery. Although he's still flashing, isn't he, JD? He is. He's, he's not allowing himself to charge up. He's still on 10%. He needs to have some confidence in his pace. It's something I have to tell myself all the time because I'm not very good at my battery EV. He, he has mm. to charge. He's using it now. Stop using your battery. You're in DRS. You don't need to use your battery. Just charge. Use your DRS. Trust your pace, and it will come say, to you at the end of the race. I have to say, I've always been notoriously too you you've been too heavy on battery usage i've been too heavy on battery saving of all as we see neon very very out of shape through uh through the little through after turn eight into turn nine and uh emotive cara picking up a three second time penalty for track limits so so far we have one two three four five six drivers with penalties to come and yeah, Quick Mick is very, he's sticking with Neon very well, isn't he, JD? Yeah, but he's still using his battery. I can see him turning on. He's not allowing himself to charge up. Mm. It's frustrating. You, know, you almost wish you can get into the ears of some of these drivers and just just look, look, do yourself a favor. Stop using, just use your DRS. That's all you need, DRS. We've gone board with our leader. He's only got 20% himself. So it, it could be really easy for Quick Mick to overturn here and have the advantage. But he has to charge. Yeah. Uh, Dan was just I've just seen Daniel P forty P forty five overtake Mr. Adam Moore. I don't know how long he's had his those tires on, but they're falling off a cliff because he's being overtaken by absolutely everyone. Uh, he was he was up in P six and has now dropped to P seven and has now dropped down to P twelve and he is indeed coming in for another pit stop and surely it'll be soft from here, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it, yeah, yeah, definitely soft from here now. Full send. It's all you can do. You got. You got to last, give it absolutely everything. Last lap attempt incoming. Yes. Possibly, we've got a yeah. battle between the two Alfa Romeos. Dark Shadow, who did recently pick up another five, another three-second penalty, uh, is into P5 uh, from Kabuki, and then Old Manzi, who is also looking to get past Kabuki in the Alfa Romeo. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, what uh, what happens in these last. Six laps, I think we have. Nope, seven laps. I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that. I always forget that additional lap. Yes. It throws me it, off every time. It does indeed. Uh, closest battle on, uh, on track right now is Old Manzi and Kabuki, and then Charlotte Bradshaw only a little bit behind, and uh, and Daniel P45 behind Charlotte in the Aston Martin as well. So it, it's all very tight for these. Uh, for these uh, points placings, isn't it, JD? It is. As we see, old oh, Manzi making a move past Kabuki there, up into P6. Can does Kabuki have a response? It doesn't appear to. The minute old oh, Manzi makes that move, stick now charges down the other Alfa Romeo, 1.8 seconds back. Um, in terms of the battle of the lead, we've got a yellow flag in sector two. I wonder what that is. Uh, I think it's Stars Orphan. No, no, it. Yes, it is Stars Orphan who went a little bit deep into the hairpin. Back to what I was saying about the lead battle, though. Quick Mick is still less than 10% battery, and I don't know whether he's got... He does just have DRS this lap, but it may be that Neon drops him this lap. Yeah, so Neon's still only on about 20% battery here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's very tight between the two. Quick Mick will try and do as best he can, but Neon has just been on another sort of pace level this entire... Um, this entire event. Yeah. Um, was... Another battle between the two Bradshaws, and it was uh, and it was Jr. Bradshaw overtaking Charlotte in the Aston Martin. Uh, we have to go crazy every time there's a battle between the two of them, don't we, JD? <laughs> oh yes. The Bradshaw yeah. battle is one that we've been introduced to tonight. One mm -hmm. that I will not forget. It's a great battle, and we love to see it. We've got Empty Hitman, in... also got on the back. Beat. Yeah, we've got Daniel P45 as well on the back of uh, Kabuki as well, so 
He'll be looking to make a move. Uh, sorry for cutting you off there, JD. No, you're absolutely fine. Looking further back as well. Is that about? Yes, it is. P14 and P15. Have a little scrap out there. Things you love uh, to see. Daniel P45 getting the exit out of the hairpin down towards turn 16. He is ahead oh. of Kabuki. Got a very good exit compared to the Alfa Romeo. And is now making his way. Going to be trying to chase after Old Manzi in the Red Bull. Uh, we've got Dark Shadow who's on the back of Rogue now. Uh, the two McLarens have kind of gone a bit, um, a bit unnoticed at the moment. They've just kind of been chilling and vibing. But... Uh, the, the second oh, McLaren of Rogue is now under a bit of pressure, isn't he, JD? Yeah, that six-second time penalty is really going to hamper him as well. He could potentially lose a few positions here. But if he doesn't, the McLarens are on to score some great points. And we'll just have a little bit of a recap for those of you that are sat watching. Providing this doesn't lack. We'll have a look at a quick recap of the Constructors' Championships right there. McLaren in P2. Really, really close to Red Bull, so they could potentially get some great points here and take over the Constructors' Championship. Yep, Old Manzi is the only Red Bull in the points playing position at the moment. He is P6. I'm riding on board with Dark Shadow. Look at, oh, so much more grip. He's right, he's pushing. Oh. He's literally pushing to the literal sense. Rogue through this little section into the hairpin. He's just got so much more grip, doesn't he? Well, as I say, that has a bit of a snap out of the hairpin. God damn it, Shadow. Why do you have to ruin my line? <laughs> We're seeing other moves over back with Kabuki. There's two Has he been overtaken by two cars? I think he just got overtaken by JR Bradshaw. He's been no, Charlotte looking to make Bradshaw. the move pass as well. Excuse me. Yeah. I guess the move what? done. And empty Hitman right behind as well. Is he, is he going to look to make the move? He's not. He's sitting behind. Yeah. Kabuki uh, losing out a whole two, three positions there. Yeah. Two pieces of information in the battle for P4. Manzi has joined the fight as um, as Rogue is now under 10% battery and uh, and Dark Shadow ain't looking too good himself. He's only just over 10%. Whereas uh, whereas I think that's yes about 25% 30% for old Manzi and of course he was the last on the new on the old tyres so he's going he's the newest tyres out of those three so it'll be very interesting. He is yeah. Seven laps. If he can make any inroads in these last five laps. Obviously, Rogue um, on the oldest tyres there. 12 laps. Dark Shadow, one lap older than Old Manzi. He's been on eight. And obviously, Old Manzi's on eight lap old medium tyres. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And look at that. We've got a battle, for, battle between Kabuki. It's fallen like an absolute stone while we've been looking at that. I wonder if he's had some kind of issue because he has fallen like an absolute stone through the field. He was up between the t with the battling with the Brad oh, do we just, with the, yeah, just the, the ghosted car of Dark Shadow oh he's, he's missing his front right end plate a little bit of a contact through 10, 11 and 12 they're not sure if that was his own mistake or he had a great contact with another car but he is now going to be struggling and he will start to fall down the order I'll tell you what Rogue won't be happy about that because Old Manzi is the one obviously Old Manzi championship leader as well um, and person on the newest tyres. Don't think that's the person you'd want behind you, is it? JD, no, the no. Oh, Dark Shadow smashed into the wall. He's going to pit and get rid of that front wing and put on a new front wing. So Dark Shadow, it's not It's not going to be a great day for Alfa Romeo, is it today, JD? No, it's not. Yeah, his, his uh, teammate Kabuki set down the P14. Really, really struggling all of a sudden on this back quarter of the race. Only a, a few laps to go as well. What can we see happen? Old Manzi, three tenths off the back of Rogue. Is he going to look to make a move here? Down through turn six now, up towards turn seven. Puts himself up the inside. Can he get the late of the break? And he does. They give each other a lovely amount of room each. Down into turn eight now. This is great driving from the Red Bull and the McLaren. A little bit of a wall tap from Rogue there. But manages to keep himself clean. And Old Manzi gets himself up to P4. Oh, something's happened. Stars Orphan retired from the session, and I wonder if the, I don't know if there was contact or was there a piece of front wing somewhere. But it is a virtual safety car in these last few laps. I don't know but, where that was, to be honest. Yeah, actually, that was a crucial move though for Manzi to get that done before the VSC came out, wasn't it? It was. It was. We have, we're going to have three racing laps left, providing this VSC hurries up and ends. 
I would also like to say good, well, good work to good work to uh, old Banzi and Rogue. They're really good battling. We we love to see this. We love to see uh, side by side battling people giving each other room. And there we go. It has ended, and we are back to green flag running. Uh, the the top three are equidistant from each other. Quick Mick has to maintain a 1.6 second gap between him and Neon. Oh, we um, have. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have to. We have the goat of all goat of commentary in the chat, Mr. TK. Welcome in. It's good to see you in here. Hey, we love TK. We love TK. The goat of all goat of comms. Welcome in, good A sir. Absolute legend. Hope I hope he's doing well. Hope you're doing well, TK. Yep. As I was saying, we've got a little bit um, of a battle between the top three still. It could all change if depending on the battery levels of the three drivers, because Immortal's only 1.7 back from from Quick Mix. So. And obviously that time penalty is hanging over the Alpine. So we'll drop to P3. Anyway. Yeah, Immortal looking like he's going to have a great result here, actually. And we've got Gravedigger on the back of MT Hitman. And we've also got Charlotte Bradshaw defending ahead. Two Aston Martins working together here. Can Gravedigger benefit off that as he makes his way down into turn eight? No, he can't. He sits behind. Almost goes up into the back of the Mercedes there. Mercedes flashing and letting him know he hasn't got a lot of battery left either. What can Gravedigger do here? Yeah, um, I, I would like to say something very quickly here. This is very interesting. Quick Mick is back in the DRS of Neon. Uh, admittedly, it still hasn't got any battery. Nope. Admittedly. Hasn't done but, for the past um, 15 laps, I think. I mean, and also as well, actually, now that I look at it, Neon has still got has got near enough a half battery full so quick quick we'll get the drs now but he just doesn't have any battery left no he doesn't riding on board with the two aston martins and the singular mercedes earlier we saw a mercedes sandwich now we've got an aston martin sandwich with the mercedes powertrain oh, mm -hmm. grave digger can't quite get past obviously has that three second top and he that he needs to think about as well we've got two laps left yep We've got two laps left of this uh, Singapore Grand Prix, which is Doug Shadow really picks up another time penalty, putting him on 20 uh, seconds. He's close to being disqualified from this race. We just track limit penalties. Definitely. Like, track limits are very Oh, MC Hitman having a bit of a moment out of turn three there. Yep, I just saw that. I'm mining on board with Gravedigger at the moment, and it looks like he's going to have the best opportunity. He needs to dump it. He needs to dump. So he's got to get past. To He's not using his battery he's very not. interestingly, not going for the move. So he's sitting back again, maybe he just wanted to go for it on the last lap. Has some confidence in his pace, and that is something you love to see. Jumping over to Daniel P45, was within a second, had a bit of a moment there at uh, nine, now drops and finds himself a second and a half back. We'll run back to the Aston Martins. Grimdog falling back a little bit there. Mm hmm. Indeed. Indeed, it's going to be. But this has been a very, very brilliant Singapore Grand Prix, hasn't it, JD? It uh, really I've, has. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I don't know if you have or not, but yeah. I have. I've, it's. Uh, I think it's probably my second favourite race this week from the four mm -hmm. divisions, three of which I've had to commentate. Oh, I've not had to. I've wanted to commentate this week. <laughs> yep. We've got Neon, who has started that last lap now. Uh, quick make behind him by just over a second, followed by Immortal. Manzi starting the final lap as well, followed by Rogue. Daniel P45, who's dropped back a bit. And then JR Bradshaw, Charlotte Bradshaw, and then MT Hitman, who goes oh. wide out the final corner. Doesn't, that part would have been a track limit penalty, but he has got no battery left, and Gravedigger's got to use that battery of his now. It's now or never, isn't it, JD? It is. He's got, got to do something here. Empty Hitman not got any battery himself. Charlotte potentially trying, trying to back Mercedes up here, trying to help Gravedigger get through. Yeah, potentially. Bosses start, right, need to start right, thinking of their own race now as Gravedigger does have that three-second time penalty. We're keeping an eye on the leader as they're making their way through turn 13, now in sector two. We yeah, won't I, think want to miss actually, I think Charlotte is trying to slow down the Mercedes because if... If Gravedigger did, does get past uh, MT Hitman, he could be going up. He could be trying to gain a gap uh, ahead of Charlotte in the in the other Aston Martin. But if that involves, first of all, uh, a pass. But it doesn't look like Gravedigger's doing that at the moment, does it? Doesn't it sit there a little bit slapping there? Into yeah. turn 13. They're all losing grip. 
Oh, we just missed it. Line, Too yeah, busy don't. watching other people. We've got a Mr. Neon taking the po top podium position here at Singapore with all immortal. Take a P2 quick mick on the bottom step of that podium, and we've still got racing going on. Yep. Old Manzi now over the line for P4. CYG Rogue takes your P5. Daniel P45 jumps ahead of him on that penalty. We'll take that P5. JR Bradshaw takes P6. Rogue gets demoted down to P7 with that penalty. In the Battle of the Bradshaws, Charlotte came out worse with a P8. Empty Hitman in P9. Gravedigger P10. Mr. Adam Moore in P11. River Motive Carrot in P12. Kabuki. Dark Shadow gets gets a five second penalty for his get get <laughs> gets the five second penalty for us for the answer penalty so he didn't he had um, another one it in the pits oh yeah it's, it's dark shadow has had quite a bad evening to say the least hasn't he jd he really really has but but that has yeah, does but that does conclude our singapore grand prix here in division four of rsf1 i don't know about you jd but i liked that race I really enjoyed that one. It was a, it was a, mm. it was a close race um, compared to Div Three last night, which I thoroughly enjoyed yeah. as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ping the top three to get them into the interview room. Mm. All right, so we got Mister Mister Neon running through again. Uh, the Immortal took P two. And here's our P3, remind me. Uh, it was um, Quick Mick. Quick Mick, that was the one. Quick Mick was very quick. And um, we'll put that there. Hey, it's only a second one of the night. Right. Uh, if you look um, just slightly higher, we've got Pit Lane. In fact, I, I can't drag you because I haven't got the permissions. In the main, you've got Pit Lane. Two out of two. There's a VC up there, we'll jump in there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Right, I'm jumping over. We're hopefully going to be joined by our either of our top three, Mr. Neon, Immortal, or Quick Mick, Hass, McLaren, Alpine. I'm glad I was able to find the VC. Don't let me forget Alpine, McLaren, Hass. We've got Mr. Neon in here. Welcome in, buddy. We've just seen if we get yep. any others joining us. Quick Mick's here as well. Hey. Well, Quick Mick. Well, mute you a minute, Mr. Neon. Quick, Mick. Welcome in, buddy. What a race from yourself. You were, uh, as the name suggests, very quick today. And I've used that joke a lot, and I'm not going to get tired three of it. Times. You've only used it three times. You're okay. <laughs> uh, could have been better, you know. Silly penalty, um, you know. But uh, wasn't too bad that I uh, managed to undercut Neon in the pits. But that penalty was like, there's no point fighting him. I need to see if I can keep Immortal behind me in third, but I mean, he's just managed to catch up at the end there. Yeah, you had you saw, you drove a fairly solid race once you got into P2. You kept pace with Neon quite convincingly. Did, was there ever any sort of point where you thought maybe I could challenge after the safety car? The the only part the part where I thought maybe I could challenge was like after the uh, after the pit stops. I mean, he, he got a great restart in the safety car and left me a little in the dust so there's no chance of getting close enough there but certainly after i did the the undercut and got past him if i hadn't had the penalty i think that could have been more interesting very 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 good race though from you would you say yeah solid solid performance and keeps me uh keeps me up there in championship without any retirement so that's cool. We love to hear this, don't we, JD? It was, yeah, we do. It was, and it was a very solid race for yourself. A bit bit lonely at the beginning. Uh, but also, we had the safety cars coming in midway through, enabling you to catch back up. Obviously, didn't quite fully have that pace to keep up with the leader. And obviously, having the penalty there alongside it as well. But you showed ph phenomenal pace tonight. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. That's the way you say it. I'm struggling with words. The week is running, <laughs> the week is running out. But no, an all-round great race from yourself. Um, I can't really think of anything else to add, to be honest, because my brain is shot. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's a Thursday evening, all of our brains are shot. Yeah. How how, how did you find Quali? Uh, Quali was frustrating. Um, knew I had the pace to, to challenge for pole over, over a single lap, but just kept making little silly mistakes in certain places, and it cost me. Yeah. 
But in the end, it didn't all matter because you pulled in a nice solid P3 result and some good points for yep. Alpine as well. Who are I'll take it. Uh, from memory? Oh, I need to pull it all up. Oh, I almost died. I can't pull it up. I can't remember where Alpine are in the constructors. Well, last time I checked, we were top. Uh, Alpine are P3 of 121 points. You've got McLaren ahead of you on 155 and Red Bull on 178. So some solid points for Alpine that will hopefully uh, help push your way up higher up the standings. And obviously yourself yeah. in, in the standings, you're third at the minute on 92 points um, with Immortal ahead of your 95. So a slight gap increased there after this race, but you have closed down the gap to Old Manzi up in uh, the first 106. So not a bad result. Not a bad result at all. Yeah, I'll take it. Fantastic. On to the next one. Exactly that. We've got Canada next week. How are you feeling with that? Looking forward to it. I'm usually pretty good at Canada. So. Oh, I'd love to hear how it goes. Got some confidence here as well. Got, got some good confidence. We like to hear this. We do. We do. Well, quick make it's been a pleasure. I'm not going to right. drone on too long. Thank you very much for popping in. We're going to speak to Mr. Neon now. Our race winner, Mr. Neon, welcome in. It's good to see you. Hello. Congratulations on your win. Obviously, I don't know much about previous race results. I don't know how many you've had before, so I can only congratulate on this one. But yeah, solid performance from you. An absolutely commanding victory from start to finish. Tell us, take us through your, your initial thoughts. Uh, it's always been one of my favourite tracks. Um, always been quite quick here. And with the adjustment to Sector 3, obviously, it's a lot better now to race here. A lot safer. Um, but I know I had the quality pace. I think I got P1 by about five tenths, something like that. So I was really happy with that. So I felt quite confident going into the race. It was just making sure I got the uh, the start down and making sure if there was any safety cars, I got the restart down as well. So I did um, manage to extend the hard so the, the mediums at the end were the, were the best they could be. And yeah, it just went, just went to plan, really. Were you so Even... oh, sorry, Mr. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that's all good um even with quick Rex undercut were you concerned at all when he undercut you and he as i came out in front were you concerned at all uh not particularly i thought that um because i knew he had the, the penalty um i wasn't too bothered um even if he didn't have the penalty i know i had the pace to at least you know put a good challenge in there to to get ahead of him and get away anyway um so i mean when you've got the confidence it's it's a lot easier but um, without the penalty, it would have been an interesting finish. Me and myself and Mick, we're, we're good friends. So it would have been uh, interesting to see if anything uh, would have uh, evolved from it. But uh, as Mick was saying, it was um, he was just trying to keep on to P2 uh, as best as he could. But unfortunately, he couldn't. No. And, and, and like I said, it was unfortunate. Were you, were you uh, I'm curious, were you struggling for any of your tie deck out there? Um, obviously, we weren't keeping, we didn't keep an eye on you a lot, being that you were by yourself and enjoy that race. Um, but we're, um, still, we're seeing a lot of cars slipping aside. And no, personally, I didn't. My setup felt really, really stable. Um, so I was really happy with it. And no, no, there was never any issue. I mean, that extra lap that I did on the hards, it was sort of starting to slip, get a bit slippy under it. But um, no, no real issues to the point where I thought I was going to crash. Oh, but that's all right then. Yeah. Uh, a quick, very quick word on uh, on quality. You, you, uh, we only obviously got there in Q two, so we only did, saw Q two and Q three. But right, com commanding, commanding through Q what through, through Q two and Q three, you had a very, very large gap to P two, didn't you? you <laughs> did you feel confident in qualifying? <laughs> Div two. <laughs> uh, yeah, I put a lot of um, I put a lot of practice, well, a lot of practice in over the last couple of days, just reacquainting myself back with with the tracks. It's been a while since I've raced there. Um, I think the best I'd got in in practice was like a twenty eight seven. So I thought if I could pull that out, then that would be more than enough. And I managed to pull a twenty eight six, so I was quite happy with that. Went quicker than the majority of the Tiv two boys, so uh, well done. Well, I did ask what, what the what the fastest Div two time was, um, and it was a twenty seven, twenty eight seven. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. Quite, quite <laughs> yeah, it, bro, it's it's literally just this one track. I'm I really like this track, and that. Well, there's, there's other tracks that I like, obviously, but evidently this one, it I don't know, it just seems to flow for me. I, just the confidence and just you know being able to send it into a lot of corners, especially the last corner where. I saw a lot of people sort of lifting quite a bit 
where I was just sort of literally tapping the brake straight back on the accelerator full full pelt, no issue at all. So that's all you yeah. need. We'll, uh, we'll see. Canada then next week. Mm-hmm. Feeling as strong for Canada as you have been tonight. Usually had bad results at Canada because of other people. Um, <laughs> there's a few corners on that track that are very, very questionable for going side by side with, and some people seem to go for go for for moves anyway. So we'll see. Generally, I like the track. Uh, it's not a bad track. It's quite a short track, so I like the shorter tracks. But mm. who knows? We'll see what happens. Yeah, we will indeed. Yeah. Oh, if there's nothing else from uh, yourself, Matteo, we will. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm out of questions. Wait, and also out of brain capacity. Yeah, and, I'm knackered. And, and energy. <laughs> I will say thank you and congratulations, Mister Neon, for joining Cheers, us mate, in you. the box, and Matteo for joining us uh, as co-coms as a last minute coming in here. Fantastic job. Really, no uh, no an absolute worries. pleasure to have you here. And no uh, everyone else that's still watching. We will be back live Monday night for Division 1 at Canada at 8pm UK time, GMT, whichever you prefer. But for me, I've been JD Devil Noob, alongside Matteo. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys.